let's talk about the good stuff first. I felt like that outdoor performance center was so great. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it came with all sorts of risks, but uh, tell me how it worked out for you guys. I, I would say that it was a real you know, a game changer for us. We were having uh, indoor performances with about 20 people in the audience, which is way fewer than what is allowed by law, but still, you know, we have felt through this whole thing that we're only gonna do things that we believe are truly safe to do. And obviously it was a big investment you know, to put that together, but yeah, you know, we are hopeful that it will have a long-term use beyond COVID times and certainly it's a um, solution to a problem that we were having, but it's also a solution to a problem that everybody who's trying to make any kind of event is having. You know, we really wanted it to be something that is a community resource. And you know, when we open back up in March, yeah, there are going to be all kinds of other organizations that are going to be programming that space along with us. Obviously, we will be very busy, you know, putting on concerts. But you know, it's everything from you know, the churches and 4-H and, you know, name your, name your organization, they all have the same problem that the Avalon does. You know, I don't really imagine you know, it being, you know, a 12-month sort of venue, but yeah, there's a whole lot of the year where it really could be programmed. And so, you know, we're working right now with the um, our architects over at RAL um, to go through, you know, from a code standpoint, what would it actually take? Because if it's a permanent structure, there's going to be things that have to be changed from what we're doing right now. It can't just be, you know, restroom trailers or whatever. You know, there's, you know, infrastructure that has to be put in place. Um, so, you know, we're learning what that's going to mean. Yeah. And then the, the hope is that once we get those, you know, sort of first round answers, yeah, that it looks feasible to go and make it that permanent, you know, use. And, you know, if we are able to put yeah, um, six or seven hundred people in downtown Easton. Yeah, you know, that's going to be really good for local restaurants. It's going to be good for any. It, it will have a lot of positive impact. You know, we're imagining a performance space, and yeah, you know, it's set in this yeah you know, yeah you know, shopping center or right behind the shopping center, um, and I think that there are all kinds of opportunities for other sort of creative businesses and, yeah, and complementary businesses. Yeah. If there's anybody out there thinking about making a brew pub in Easton, I know where it should be, you know? Uh, you, you guys are involved in the vaccine rollout, right? What, yeah, you, 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 in the category of you can't make this stuff up, <laughs> the Avalon, the arts organization, are yeah, on the front line of the vaccine rollout. <laughs> Well, we are never going to get into the business of putting you know, you know, needles in people's arms. That's what the health department does. You know, we realized that we could play a role in handling the, the public questions and getting people signed up. We have a phone system. It's got multiple lines. You know, we added a couple of extra lines just to be sure. But you know, yeah, the when you think about what we do in terms of selling tickets, it's not actually that different than getting people signed up on a, <laughs> to, for an appointment. You know, we, we have a staff that has really excellent, you know, yeah, sort of customer service skills. Yeah, and are very competent in terms of, you know, filling out the forms and getting everything exactly so, you know, you have to know exactly where and what your seat is and so forth. So, um, we called the health department and said, we have capacity, how can we help? And they said, we really need a call center. So that, because we're just buried in phone calls, like everybody is angry because the, when you call the health department, it rings busy because all the lines are full and we need, they just needed a whole lot more capacity and they needed it instantly. The Avalon is fortunate in that we are uh, an organization that is able to sustain itself in terms of a labor and overhead kind of thing based on its contributed income. So we, as long as that stays the same over time, we can hunker down and do very little. And our plan is to do everything we possibly can safely. Yeah, 
And so you're seeing examples of that. Yeah, but really, you know, it's the, the sustained contributed income makes that possible. So, you know, I, I want to put out some real gratitude to our whole community who have been stepping up and contributing and keeping us going and, and allowing us to do, you know, the things that you would expect from us and the things that you would not expect from us. So we're really eager to really get back into the, you know, supporting the schools that's been a really challenging thing to do in this time period. But mm -hmm. yeah, we're certainly talking to them about what their needs are. And I think, yeah. you know, you can look for some, you know, some new programming that is you know, helping kids you know, coming up too. Thank you, Al. You bet. Good.